We want to uh, move along here. We have with us uh, two members of the House Financial Services Committee. We want to talk a number of issues today, but we welcome once again two of our favorite congressmen, uh, the Democrat Brad Sherman of California and the Republican Scott Ger uh, Garrett of New Jersey. Good to see you both. Thank you for joining us today. Good to be with you. And let me start with the flu situation, especially you, Congressman Sherman. I mean, you know, it, Mexico has been identified as ground zero for this, but people who have traveled to California have also found themselves contracting uh, flu. Are you, um, are you okay with the response in your state, uh, with the, the governor declaring the state of emergency and so forth? I think I'm okay with the response. We have to be vigilant, and yet it may turn out that this flu is uh, no worse than the seasonal flu that we uh, suffered last winter. And Keep in mind, flu kills 36,000 Americans mm -hmm. uh, traditionally every flu season. And Congressman Garrett, uh, uh, Governor Corzine has voiced his cautious optimism on this as well in, in the number of Tamiflu doses that are available to, to people in the state as well. Yeah, I, I try to remain optimistic uh, on this, uh, on all the issues. Um, uh, from the administration, though, we're getting a little bit of a mixed messages on it. You know, you know, the other day, uh, the vice president was out there, sort of stirring up more than uh, than calming down on the issue. When we we should not any best be tra traveling in planes, trains, or I guess automobiles as well. I think what we really need to do is has the CDC come out and just come up with one coherent message to all of us, so we all know how to deal with it, and that would maybe alleviate some of the massive call or number right. of calls that yeah, we all that get was, as offices. That, that was nice of him to advise me not to take the subway when you know I got to take the subway uh, every, every day. day, and he he rides in a private. Car. Congressman Garrett, a, a follow-up. Uh, uh, I realize that the Obama administration has been very decisive in responding to the flu virus, but I wonder, would we have panicked less if instead, if President Obama had stayed out of the scene, Vice President Biden stay out of the scene, and just let your health people handle it and let them hold the press conferences? When Obama gets involved, it raises the crisis level. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, when, when he gets involved with a, a number of issues, you see things happen. You see what happens on the financial markets when he speaks during that time, what happens to the markets. Mm -hmm. uh, when he speaks in this area, what happens here as well. You get uh, mixed messages. We have an authority. We have agencies that deal with these issues. Let them deal with it. Okay. They are the experts. Congressman Sherman, can I turn you to the stress test for the banks, mm -hmm. which has now been delayed till next Thursday, the release of which? There are those in the market who are saying that that is, once again, undermining the credibility of Treasury. That if indeed there are some issues with this stress test, that was what the purpose of the stress test was, was to come up with the issues, and that the delay is hurting Treasury's credibility. What's your, what's your reaction to that? I, uh, I think that a few more days, if well spent, are well worth it. My concern is that it, they're not counting preferred stock equity as part of the equity of the bank. And as a practical matter, preferred stock is equity. So I, I hope that they, they would do that. I hope what we don't see is the stress test uh, solution being that we now have to convert the federal government ownership mm -hmm. from preferred stock to common stock. I don't think that strengthens the bank, but it does weaken uh, the position uh, of, the, uh, of the taxpayer. And Congressman Garrett, what, what is your opinion of the delay and, and some of the components that we'll learn about with the stress test? Well, you know, it's been sort of the, the playbook of this administration that they start things without a real clear exit strategy from day one. And I was always questioning, what is going to be the exit strategy on this plan? Because you're going to go in there, you're going to do a, a stress test, and then you're going to come out with information. Maybe it's going to be good, maybe it's going to be bad, but you have to have a plan and rolling it out. And obviously they didn't have that plan. Congressman and Sherman. Um well, how does the legal uh, aspect work to this? I know that city, we here at Citigroup and Bank of America are pushing back and saying we don't need to raise more capital. Can government actually force a bank to raise more capital because of how government interprets the stress test? Or is it an advisory situation that the bank has very little choice because the government has money in the bank? I think as a strict legal matter, he can't force them to raise more capital unless they fall below legal limits. But as a practical matter, uh, who's going to want to have their money in a bank uh, that the Department of the Treasury says is unsound and cannot deal with stress? So I think as a practical matter, uh, he can uh, badmouth the bank to the point where it would absolutely need more well, capital. Sherman, I, that, I, I that, hope that, that kind isn't of, what, what we're going to be talking about. That today. kind of points up one of the, I guess, Achilles heels of this uh, of this whole exercise, which is that they insist, the regulators do, that this is not a test for solvency, that this is a what-if scenario. What you're suggesting is that the markets are going to take it as just that, as a solvency uh, test. Well, certainly depositors uh, are getting almost no return on their bank deposits, so they're, they're looking to avoid risk. And uh, if they're not federally insured, or even if they are... Their deposits uh, they, are guaranteed. 
their deposits are guaranteed, but if, you, if you're making 0% on your money, you just as soon have it in a uh, bank that is not going to require you uh, to deal with the FDIC. Uh, the indie bank uh, depositors are, are not as happy as those uh, at more solvent institutions. So uh, I do think that uh, the depositors and the, and the counterparties are going to want to deal with banks that are not only solvent today, but will be solvent even if the unemployment rate goes to 10.5%, which is roughly the test that's being imposed on the worst on the worst case, or not worst, but mm -hmm. bad case scenario. I thought uh, this is something the banks were supposed tests. to decide for themselves. They run well, their own stress tests all the time. Rebecca? Speaking of that bank question, Representative Garrett, uh, moving over to the lenders and the question of the credit card lenders yeah. and the House passing the credit card reforms, what's your take on that? Is there any... Uh, leeway for unintended consequences in this. Well, it's not just us saying that there's unintended consequences, but the Fed came in and they testified on this and said there are definitely going to be unintended consequences. We're in a terrible credit situation right now in this country. You, we all know that very well. The worst thing you could do is take any action that's going to make getting credit even more difficult. We all agree that there need, there's a need for more transparency out there in the credit card marketplace, and part of the bill had that in it. We would have been on board to do it. The Fed has already spent you know months putting together regulations on this. There's 1,200 pages of regulations. Congress steps in for political reasons and otherwise, goes overboard with uh, what we're trying to do now, and uh, we're going to tighten it up. We're going to make it even harder for that family who's having a tough time right now to get that credit card. All you have to do is look at Europe. They did the same thing over there, and the number of issuers shrank, the amount of credit out there shrank, the ability of people to get credit cards shrank. Congress, Rep Garrett. Representative Sherman, uh, yesterday the Senate defeated the mortgage cram-down bill. Is it dead now as far as the House is concerned? I don't think it's dead, but I think it'll be substantially modified. Going back to the credit card holder bill of rights, there's no rate regulation in that bill. Uh, what there is is fair treatment of the consumer. And if the way to keep credit card companies happy is to allow them to engage in trickery and say, well, we've got full disclosure because it's on page 27 of that document you can't even read, uh, that's not full disclosure. You know, full, if you don't read the document, system. it's your own fault. Why are we working so hard to protect people from everything that could go wrong? What happened to personal responsibility? Congressman. Congressman Garrett, are you not afraid for the future of capitalism and personal responsibility in this country? Well, this is craziness. It, 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 What's it is, on page 27 craziness. of your credit card agreement? Can you tell us now? I'm sorry, what? What's, What's on, on page, page 27, 27 of your, of your credit, credit card agreement? You know, Have you what, read if it? I didn't read it, it's my fault, and I don't want Congress passing some law that's going to protect me. How no, about I have no credit card debt because it's a terrible form of debt, and anyone who lets their credit card run up is doing the wrong thing. And, if, and then if you then say, but the poor have no choice, well, we ought to do other things for the poor so they don't have to take credit cards. Well, but, you know, Barney Frank answer, basically answered your, your question as, can't we trust the American people? And he basically said no. He said, you know, there's people out there who just don't understand the stuff. They don't, they're not educated enough. The government has to step in. Yeah, this and is so, what happens when you have a president well, who opens his press conference by saying, make sure you wash your hands. I don't want a president right, who's going to be go, my dad. We have to go, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay. Congressman, a pleasure to have you Thank here. You a little Thank off topic at the end then. Can I just make a point but, on that, yes. what Dennis is saying? Dennis, what, one of the things that's come out I here, say yes. Dennis, we could have said no. Then, Go ahead. Dennis, one of the things that's come out is, is some of these rules that are out there, especially from the Federal Reserve, are a result of doing uh, uh, public tests on these things. And what they have found in certain instances is there is no way to correctly inform people of certain things. And that is the nexus when the government gets involved. Wait, say that is again. Is that there there's is no, no way, way there's no ability to inform some, some, some people of certain things. For example, the changing of interest rates on balances on credit cards. They did actual tests with people. They gave them a variety of different things. They could not get people to understand what was in the document. Then debts. tell them not to take on credit card debt at all. You know, the Fed, is it 2010? Yeah, that's a smart solution this for the free okay. markets. We'll that's take a, smart a quick solution. break. They, that's no, ridiculous. That. No, that is a free that's market. Ridiculous. No, like that is credit, not a free market. If you don't like the credit card terms, don't take the free, free market. Card. Bye. It's one thing we all have in common. Each is as important as the next.